What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. Today, I'll be bringing you my 2020 fantasy football wide receiver ranks. In this video, we'll do one through 12. And in a video, probably at the end of the week or next week, we'll do my 13 through 24 rankings in PPR leagues. Last week, I did uh, my receiver ranks. I did one through 12 and I did a 13 through 24. So if you wanna check that out, it'll be a notification in the top or it'll be in the description below or you can just go to the channel and check it out. So. Let's get right into it. Before I say anything else, I haven't got a haircut yet. That's why I have this stupid little flap in the front. Not worried about it. But let's hop right into my uh, wide receiver ranks. So this year's class is a little weird from you know previous classes. I mean, it, it's one of the ones where it, it's pretty deep. It, it's top heavy. So like I think like one through 15, 16 really have legitimate chances. And these are guys that have been wide receiver ones in the past. But there's a lot of, you know, <laughs> unknowns. There's a lot of guys that are going to have their up and down weeks where I feel like in the past you you knew what you're getting out of your wide receiver, you know, like 1 through 12. You knew their wide receiver 1s and they're going to be pretty consistent. This year, I'm not so sure about a lot of guys. So, but like I said, let's hop right into it. And my 1 through 5, it's pretty much the consensus around, um, you know, around the fantasy community. So I don't want to spend too much time on these guys just because you guys all know them. And the one guy I just kind of want to talk about, I guess, would be... Okay, so I'm Michael Thomas at one, Tyreek Hill at two, Devontae Adams at three, Julio Jones at four, DeAndre Hopkins at five. <clears throat> Michael Thomas is the obvious one at one. I mean, I don't think you're gonna see anyone really else there. I I don't I don't see a name that could really, you know, be in, in Michael Thomas's spot. So Michael Thomas is pretty much one. Tyreek Hill is the one that I don't see a lot of number two. And the only reason I'll say I have him there is I've seen the Julio Jones story before, right? Of course, I mean he has it, it, it'd be it would be six seasons in a row with 13 or 1400 yards or more he finished seven yards short last year dude almost had 1400 yards in his age 30 season so he's a beast but he doesn't have, he doesn't get touchdowns you know he didn't score a touchdown last year from week i believe it was like week six to week 15 i believe so it was almost 10 weeks where he didn't score a touchdown so you know julio i can't really put there Devonte adams only has one season over you know a thousand yards you know, in those seasons, though, he does have a lot of touchdowns, which kind of, you know, that's why I have him third, just because if he does put it all together, I'm pretty confident in the touchdowns. And if he gets 1,300 like he did in 2018 and 10, 12 touchdowns, he's going to finish as maybe the number one wide receiver if Michael Thomas is a little you know, behind. And DeAndre Hopkins out of at five, mostly because he's switching teams. That's really the reason is I don't know if Kyler Murray is going to be any good. I mean, if Kyler Murray doesn't improve from last year, I don't expect DeAndre Hopkins to be a top five receiver. It's just probably not going to happen. Tyreek Hill at number two for me is mostly because I think he is such, he's one of the best receivers in the league. Dude, he's the fastest accelerator, the fastest, the just the fastest in general. I mean, the, his ability to make people miss left and right, his acceleration, his start stop, his ability, he's only five, I believe he's five, nine or five, 10, but his ability to jump, you know, get jump balls and, you know, muscle receiver or uh, corners rather. I mean, he's just really good. And Patrick Mahomes' arm is just, it's no joke. Last year was a down year for him. I mean, he got hurt, but like I said, I just think Tyreek Hill is such a, he he's the, he's the one true guy, him and maybe I would say Julio Jones and Odell Beckham. Those are probably the three receivers that I think of off the top of my head who can really take an 80 yard pass for a touchdown where they can make something happen and they can really take it the distance and, you know, make your fancy day and, or fancy week, I guess, in one play where, you know, Michael Thomas is really good, but, you know, he's not really catching long bombs. Devontae Adams, I mean, I've seen it from him, but not consistently enough. And there's a lot of other names too. Tyree Kill is just a true playmaker. So, you know, let's just move on. You know, I love Tyreek Hill too. You guys may disagree. If you take any one of those guys, at your number one through five, I really can't disagree with you. But let's move on. So, like I said, Michael Thomas one, Tyreek Hill two, Devontae Adams three, Julio four, DeAndre Hopkins five. So, number six for me is Kenny Galladay. Now, Kenny Galladay is another guy that's kind of, it's, it's an iffy one, I guess you could say. But I really, really like him as a player. And I don't think many people have him at six. But, you know, I think he's, dude, he's, a, he's so great. He's a great route runner. He's great at the jump balls. I mean, he really, he wins those 50-50 balls better than almost anyone in the NFL. And, like, he's not that fast, but he does, but he, but somehow he gets open on the long balls. He wins these big, he's so physical. He wins these jump balls left and right. It, it's crazy how often he wins them. 
Matt Stafford is great, too. I mean, I love Matt Stafford. I think he's one underrated player. It sounds like I'm a Detroit fan, but I'm not. You know, I just think Matt Stafford and Kenny Galladay are great. And I think Marvin Jones is a good compliment, too. That whole offense is, could, you know, be on the rise this year. But, you know, Galladay started off the season with 640, 640 yards, seven touchdowns. And, you know, he ranked eighth in standard leagues, 11th in PPR last year. In, uh, in and through week nine, so he only played eight games, so he missed a game compared to other receivers who didn't. Then you had, you know, Matthew Stafford miss a week or uh, miss the rest of the season rather after week nine. So you know, so Galladay finished still with 550 yards from weeks uh, 10 through 17 and four touchdowns in an eight-game stretch, ranked 13th in standard, 16th in PPR. That's one spot in PPR at least behind DeAndre Hopkins from weeks 10 to 17. That was with David Blau and. I, I don't even know who the other backup was, you know, for the Lions. So he did all this with a backup quarterback, no Matthew Stafford. And the pace that Matthew Stafford was on the last year, if he would have stayed on that pace, he had 19 touchdowns and five picks in eight games. <laughs> you know, like, that's just a crazy pace that, I mean, was it going to keep up? I, I doubt it, but, you know, it, it's impressive nonetheless. I just think Kenny Galladay is a really good receiver, and he did it with David Blau, you know. The, the receptions weren't totally there, but he really made your days with the big jump ball catches. They just threw it up to him, and he really made plays. And that's kind of all you can ask for where somebody later on my list is going to be like Chris Godwin. If Chris Godwin had David Blau as his quarterback, I wouldn't be so confident. You know, I wouldn't be confident that you know he could just kind of luck you into some touchdowns and get you through the weeks. I mean, if he finished at 16th through those weeks, I mean, that's, that's a wide receiver too with a backup quarterback that's never played in the NFL before. So I'm pretty confident with it. I think Stafford comes back and I think they have a great season. Moving on to my number seven is Mike Evans. Mike Evans. I mean, I don't want to say a lot on these guys either. I'll put these two together. Mike Evans at seven. And then I put Chris Godwin at eight, which is hard because we saw them both have breakout seasons last year. Uh, Mike Evans only played, I believe 13 games and he got hurt, hurt, pulled his hamstring on that touchdown catch. And Mike Evans, a great player. I mean, and he's one of those, another guy, like another one of those great jump ball players. I believe he's has the the record for like six straight seasons of a thousand yards since his rookie year. I mean, the dude's kind of seems like he's locked for over a thousand. I mean, he's done it with, you know, like Josh McCown, uh, Matt McGloin, um, Ryan Fitzpatrick, you know, all these Jameis Winston. He's done it with all these different quarterbacks that weren't very good. And, you know, I just think Mike Evans is like a really good receiver, another underrated guy. And I mean, listen, people are going to say Chris Godwin's better because he could play the Edelman rule with Brady. Dude, Brady's going to get him his touches. Okay. We haven't had a big receiver in Brady, you know, in New England in a while since probably Randy Moss, to be honest. Mike Evans is so good. I, I just can't imagine it where Brady doesn't have, or Evans rather, doesn't finish with almost do- double digit touchdowns. I think where Chris Godwin and him will differ is I think Godwin can finish with more yards, but less touchdowns. And I think Evans can finish with less yards, but more touchdowns, way more touchdowns. Because if Chris Godwin, my number eight, if he steps in and plays the Edelman rule like in New England, I mean, that's just, that's a, that's a great role to be in. I mean, you couldn't com- obviously complain about that. And, you know, I would want to be in that position too if I was Chris Godwin. So, you know, I, I don't know. I, I like Evans more as a player. I think he's more dynamic, and you can use him more in the red zone. And maybe Gronk hurts his red zone value, but who knows about Gronk? I mean, the dude hasn't been healthy in 20 years. I mean, who knows if he even can play the full season? So I like Mike Evans at seven and Chris Godwin at eight. And that's not me trying to, like, I feel like I just talk crap on Chris or uh, Chris Godwin, but I like Chris Godwin. He's good. He's a really good player, good route runner, fast. I just, I don't know. I, I feel more confident with Mike Evans at seven, but I still think Chris Godwin's a great player. Moving on to my number, uh, my number nine is Cooper Cup. Another one where, you know, it it's another one that not, not a lot of people are going to say, but I really like Cooper Cup as a player. Scored 10 touchdowns last year, or scored 10 touchdowns, and if he played a full 2018 season, would have been on pace for 12. So 10 last year, he only finished, what, I believe, six the year before, but he got hurt. But what if it was on pace for 12? And I don't think it's a fluke. You know, Goff, I think, sucks at the deep ball. I think that's why Brandon Cooks wasn't always the best there and very inconsistent because Jared Goff sucks at the deep ball. He's, you know, he's a little bit of a frantic quarterback, doesn't handle pressure well, so he has to dump it off. And, you know, Cooper Cup has some weird splits from last year. Games one through eight, he had 58 catches, 792 yards, five touchdowns in eight games. 
So he's almost having 100 yards a game, five touchdowns in eight games, 58 catches, which is really high. Then weeks 9 through 16, you know, so like the end of the season, he only finished with 36 receptions, which is like almost less than, or like, you know, under 20 less than he had from the first half. 369 yards, which is less than half, but finished with five touchdowns in the last five games, I believe it was. So you had him in fantasy and you you had to kind of, you're forced to play him. He, he kind of helped you, you know, he, he didn't hurt you, but because of the touchdowns, but his yards was really low. And I mean, look at the, look, look at the snap counts he had from the first, you know, first eight games, he's playing almost over 90% of the snaps in every game. There's a few games where it dipped below just because of, um, he got hurt in one, I believe. And, you know, various other things, you know, they're blowing a team out in one of them. So, um, you know, but whatever. So then when you go through week 13, 14, 16, 17, right. Four, four games in the last stretch where he played 72% of the snaps, 28% of the snaps in weeks 14. I believe, I believe he got hurt that week, but played week 15, played 90 snaps in week 15. Week 16, he played 61. Week 17, played 61 snaps, percent of the snaps. That's not great. You know, I, I, I don't know what happened, and I don't think anyone really does. You know, something could be they wanted to play Tyler Higby more. Tyler Higby played games 1 through 8, played 45% of the snaps. 9 through 16, played 79.5. And if you take out that game nine and just do from 10 to uh, 16, it would have been up around probably like 85% because a week or a game nine, he only played 33% of the snaps. So, you know, Tyler Hibby really took over there as the main tight end and played a lot. And I mean, him and Cooper Cup really do the same things. It's not a lot of vertical stuff. It's a lot of like the sticks, that little out routes, the, you know, just Goff having to check it down underneath because he's not confident in the deep ball. The reason I like Cooper Cup so much and is because I think he's a really good player. He reminds me of the Julian Edelman type. He's not going to be your downfield guy. He's great after the catch. We saw how many long plays he's taken over his career. You know, he looks like he's one of the go-to players in that offense, even though it didn't look like in the second half of the season. I mean, he still finished with over 1,100 yards and 10 touchdowns. Robert Woods, kind of the same deal, but he had three touchdowns last year. So, you know, Cooper Cup is going to have to be one of the main red zone targets. And that offense... I mean, they lost Todd Gurley. Is that offensive line going to be better? Is this the downfall for the Rams? They're going to have to throw a lot. I mean, they did last year. I believe Jared Goff was like top three in pass attempts. You know, I just want to see him used as much as possible because I think he's a good enough player to do it. And I feel pretty confident with the touchdown numbers that he won't regress down to, you know, like five or six. So moving on to number 10. My number 10 is Odo Beckham Jr. So I still think he's a stud, right, in Cleveland. You know, but... Baker Mayfield needs to play better. That's just kind of what it comes down to is I will say last year, I think Odell had some bad moments. I mean, the the Cardinal game, he dropped some really not easy passes, but you pay Odell Beckham to catch the back shoulders, the the high outside passes that are off that that only he can make. And he wasn't catching them. He wasn't, he didn't live up to the money last year, really. And I don't think, I think it was because of Baker Mayfield. I mean, he was under pressure. He is really inaccurate last year. It wasn't, you know, he got David Njoku hurt last year because he threw high and he got his legs, you know, cut underneath from him and hurt his uh, collarbone, I believe, or his wrist. So, you know, I think Odo Beckham can still come back to start him. Great player. I mean, we saw against the Jets in, I believe, week four or five. Or it might have been earlier than that. He, I mean, he took like a little slant and took it like 80 yards for a touchdown and saved your week. I mean... The Duke can still play. It's obvious. It's just, <laughs> I don't know. It's just Baker needs to play better. The offensive line needs to get better. Hopefully Kevin Stefanski really steps in and plays good. I mean, he knows how to use the running game. And he, he had two star receivers with Adam Thielen and Stephon Diggs in, in uh, Minnesota. So, you know, I don't know. I, lo- I like Baker a lot at, at 10 because I think he's such a steal in that position. We, I mean, have we seen him really finish outside the top top number one receiver or as a number one we have it last year and you know there's other excuses I mean I guess he had hernia surgery so if he was battling that all year that might have been a part of the reason but you know I don't know I don't know I just I I like him at 10 because I think he's such a dynamic player I mean he's arguably the best receiver in the NFL talent wise he really is we just need to see him put all together in Cleveland and, I mean, the season last year wasn't horrible. I mean, he only finished with four touchdowns. That's what killed you in a little bit over 1,000. But if Odo Beckham can get back on track, there's no reason why he can't finish as a top five receiver. And getting him at number 10, 
I mean, that that's a steal. That's a steal getting Odo Beckham maybe in your second, late second, early third rounds. Moving on to my number 11. And I flip-flopped this one, my number 12, actually. But number 11 is Adam Thielen. I think he's one of the best route runners in the NFL. You know, just because he's a white guy doesn't mean he's slow and not fast. He is. You know, he was hurt a majority of the year last year, came back, re-injured himself on a touchdown catch, I believe, against Detroit. And last year was the first time he's ever missed any games due to injury in his whole career. So I don't worry about it being like a reoccurring thing. I just think he got hurt. It happens. Stephon Diggs is gone. So that's kind of a way you can argue both ways. You could argue it means more targets for Adam Thielen because who else do they throw to? They have Justin Jackson or Justin Jefferson, rather, who uh, they drafted from LSU with Joe Burrow last year. But you could argue that means more attention can be paid or can be can be made to uh, uh, Adam Thielen. Can be you know folk. You can the defense defense will focus on Adam Thielen more than uh, they would because there's no really other outside threat there because Stephon Diggs is gone. And you know I'm not a huge Kirk Cousins fan. But just looking at the throws him and Thielen connected on last year, like, they have a great connection. And, like I said, I don't think Kirk Cousins is the best quarterback. I mean, at least he's not, he doesn't deserve the money he got. But he's, but, dude, Adam Thielen's really good. He's someone who stood out to me big time. Big, big time. The The only reason I guess I have him at 11 is I worry that he might do it, the Juju from last year. Where, of course, Juju lost Big Ben, but... He put up his, like, 1,400-yard season and then followed it up with he got hurt himself. But, like, 600 yards, and even when he did play, it was very up and down. And really, it was honestly pretty bad. So I worry that if Adam Thielen's by himself in that receiving core and, you know, Justin Justin Jefferson's not ready to play, and I don't even know if Laquan Treadwell's there anymore, and I, maybe Jarius Wright, I believe, might have been the other receiver. Or I um, can't think of his name right now, but uh, all B.C. Johnson's there. Like, it's just a lot of pieces that aren't ready to really step up. At least I don't think so. And if it's just Adam Thielen, I don't know if he's ready to be in a 1A, where last year he might have been the 1A, 1B kind of combo with Stephon Diggs. And my number 12 is Allen Robinson. He's a great player, too. I mean, he's another one of those guys that, for being a big dude, he can fly. He's really quick. He's a good route runner as well and has a big frame to catch those horrible thrown balls from from Mr. Bisky last year and Chase Daniel and probably going to be Nick Foles this year. Targeted 10 plus times, seven or yeah, 10, 10 or more times set in seven games last year with two games of nine targets. So in nine games, he was targeted nine times or more, which is really high numbers. You know, and he had a breakout year last year 98 catches, almost 1,200 yards, and seven touchdowns. You know, what comes down to Allen Robinson for, for me is you know it, I know it. It's Mitch Trubisky or Nick Foles throwing him the ball. I don't know if those are reliable options. And you know, in this season, not we've seen him break out before in Jacksonville with a bad quarterback. We've seen it. And I just worry that, you know, who, what kind of player, who is he? Who is Allen Robinson? Is he this beast? Or is he going to come back to earth a little bit? I mean, in 2018, he was he didn't play the full season. I believe he missed uh, two or three games. But he was on pace for 67 catches, 928 yards, and five touchdowns. So his rule kind of completely reversed where there he was more of a deep ball guy. He caught, you know, his yards per target was way deeper, but then, you know, because he caught 30 less passes or would have been on pace for it and only like 150 yards less, 200 yards. So, you know, what is Allen Robinson? Is he a deep guy? Is he going to have to be the check down guy that they just throw a lot to and his yards, you know, yards, you know, pass depth is really short. You know, it's not as far as it used to be or as long as it would be with a better quarterback. I don't know, and I don't know what they have in store for the next year's offense. With no Mitch Trubisky, I'm guessing it's going to be uh, Nick Foles. Are they going to make it more vertical, or are they going to let him, you know, allow him to still be the underneath guy and, you know, run a lot of slants and ins and, you know, out routes, not the nine, the streak or the deep post, you know? We don't know, but I still think the player is just so talented that it's hard not to, if he stays healthy, to expect him to go over 1,000 yards and push for... I, I guess, you know, seven to ten touchdowns because I think he's such a good player. But with the quarterback, I, I realize the downside. And that's kind of why I have a number 12 and not higher. And that's that's the thing with some of these guys you have to realize is, you know, like Cooper Cup at nine, that's high. But I still have him low. And Baker, or uh, Odell Beckham, we have him at nine, 10, 11, 12 because we don't know their situations really. And we don't know about their quarterbacks too. A lot of these guys, we don't know about the quarterbacks. Are you, are you sold on Jared Goff, you know? Are you sold on... Kirk Cousins really is being a reliable quarterback or Nick Foles. 
you know, I'm, or Baker Mayfield, you know, I'm, I'm not totally sold. But the reason I have these guys, and I am sure that I like these guys as players, is because I think they're super talented. And I think talent wins out most of the time, even with bad quarterbacks. Like the Kenny Galladay thing, with a bad quarterback, of course he wasn't a wide receiver one, but the dude still, you know, he could still be in your fantasy lineup and not completely kill your team, which is such an added bonus for such a good player. And that's why I think all these guys, you know, fall in. Any one of these guys could be a top five receiver if they really really put together a good season because they're so talented, but you know, it's, it's less of a chance. That's why I have them 12 and not five, but, but yeah, that's my list, you know, and I didn't want to sound unsure about the guys because I really do believe in all their talents. So let me run through the list again. I have Michael Thomas, number one, Tyree kill, number two, Devontae Adams, three, Julio Jones, four, Deandre Hopkins, five, Kenny Galladay, six, Mike Evans, seven, Chris Godwin, eight, Cooper Cup, nine, OBJ, Odo Beckham Jr., 10, Adam Thielen, 11, and Allen Robinson, 12. So, you know, that's my list. I'm pretty confident with the guys, and I don't think I'll be making any changes. You know, sometimes when I do the list, I want to make a little bit, you know, some tweaks here and there, but I'm pretty confident with the guys, and I don't think there's anyone below who are really going to make that jump up for me. And, you know, in the upcoming, you know, you know months or whatever, I, I seem pretty, pretty confident with these guys. And, you know, there's a, there's a few names here that aren't in the top 12 that other people have, like I'll, Amari Cooper for one. And we'll talk about that in the next video. But like I said, I'm really confident about my list. And I just didn't want to just go with the guys that everyone else talks about. That's why I have Cooper Cup in my top 10, you know, not a lot of people are going to have that. So, but yeah, um, yeah, so that's it for the video. I really appreciate you guys watching. Um, like I said too, if you want to check out the running back, uh, wider, or uh, quarterback, the running back fantasy rankings that I did, uh, they'll be in the description below, or there'll be a notification on top of the screen, or be at the end card, or you can go on the channel. And same thing for wide receivers. You know, um, I'll be coming out with a video later in the week discussing my 13 through 24, and then we'll probably move on to tight end and quarterback, and maybe just mix that into one because there's no point in having all these different lists for super small positions. But once again, I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I really do appreciate it. And uh, Hey, stay tuned, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you guys next time.